that I'm going to present what we're going to do in CIE um, in the coming uh, years. Um, reason to do so, so reason why we picked this up in CIE, and CIE, for those that do not know, is the International Committee on Lighting. Uh, the reason why we picked that up is actually a request from the Global Lighting Forum um, to CIE to come up with a document dealing really with the benefits of daylighting, so the visual, the health, and the environmental benefits of daylighting. And in this process, we got in to, I got in two quotes that I would like to share. That's one of Jennifer Veach, says that what she sees is that uh, people reduce, or designers reduce the window size just to make sure that the uh, thermal comfort is okay, uh, but forget about the, uh, the daylighting. And then I have a quote of uh, Werner, he wrote that to me, and I used that in the uh, preparation of, uh, of the TC work as well saying that he hears that daylighting is becoming less of interest because we have LEDs now, um, thinking that we with LEDs could do what we can do with, uh, with daylighting. So I absolutely believe that there's a huge need to come up with a document um, that shows that that's absolutely not the case. So I have to admit, I come from a luminaire manufacturer, so I have worked with LEDs. I know their benefits, but I think there's nothing like, uh, like daylight. And I actually knew that uh, when I was working for Philips uh, as well. So the CIETC um, joint TC, so it's a, a joint committee between, uh, I think I have it on the, uh, no, I don't have it on this, uh, on this slide, but it's a joint committee between Division 3 and Division 6, and Division 3 deals with interior design, uh, interior environment and lighting design, so more the indoor lighting and daylighting, and Division 6 deals with um, photobiolo photobiology and photochemistry, so there are a different kind of people one day, and we try to work together now um, uh, in this joint committee. Um, why is CIE doing it? Because um, that's an international committee. Um, we hope to get input from all uh, areas around the world. There's already a lot of work done, so in the end it is aiming at reviewing the material that's already there. And I'll uh, give you a, uh, a, a preview on that, what you can expect from us uh, in, a, in a minute. So we will review the material that's already there, probably look at research that's currently ongoing, point that out, and hopefully in the end uh, we'll end up with some guidelines how to deal with that. So we will definitely implement the work uh, going on on metrics like uh, Lisa Hesong uh, presented this morning, but also the work done in, uh, in Europe if we can come up with some, uh, some criteria. Well, there are quite some people that already showed that, and this slide won't be in the slides that will be on the internet, but that's just to show who already said that they might be interested in um, adding some, or adding, putting some effort in this uh, technical committee. It's just to give you an impression that we have people from different, uh, different um, disciplines and different areas uh, around the world and um, they indicated that they might be interested in doing some work. Now in a later stage, big reviewing work, uh, handing, in, um, in, uh, handing in material and I have to admit we just started a few months ago or actually a month ago in CIE meeting in Paris um, with this committee so um, we're just organizing ourselves uh, at the moment. That's one of the reasons why I cannot give you, can give you, why I cannot give you a complete overview of the benefits of, of daylighting. Um, I can just give you a, an overview of what you can expect from us, uh, hopefully in the coming two to three years. Um, that sounds pretty bad, but that's the way it works in CIE. CIE is uh, based on voluntary um, work, so we need to, we depend actually on the people that want to do something in this area. But what we decided is that we will have technical notes. Normally a technical report takes quite some time, but we will have technical notes in between that will be uh, freely available on the internet. So we plan to have a technical note next year with the first part of review, then a technical note one year later with the second part, and then the design guidelines or the guidelines, the criteria, will be included in the technical report that I hopefully finish, uh, we hopefully finish uh, in, uh, in about uh, three years. 
Of course, that's based on a lot of material that's already there. So if you want to read something about the benefits of daylight, there is already quite something out there. There are parts, so I think it's uh, important to put that all together. And this is just a, um, these are just five that are, um, that are available on the internet. You can look in, into, um, but that's just five. There is a lot of material. Uh, and what I will show you in the coming slides is some more references that you could look into if you, uh, if we'd, if you would like to have more information. The reason why we do this is, um, and I think the, the third quote on this, uh, on this slide says it pretty well, um, is that people seem to prefer daylight. As I just said myself, um, I love daylight. Um, we, I don't think that we actually know why this is. We have some ideas about it. But people really like daylight. And it's all based on work from uh, Judith Heerwagen. Uh, but there's, of course, more information on that. But it's, these are three quotes that show that daylight, daylight is very important, even if people perceive discomfort from this daylight. They still prefer it over electrical lighting. Um, so I went back to, um, oh, I just started again at the university a year ago, uh, back to daylight again, which I like, and I, th I started to think about what is it that makes it really different. And what I found out, talking to quite some people in the last two days, uh, is that I'm definitely not the only one which really, really <laughs> I really, really like. So there are quite some people looking into the... Um, the difference between daylight and artificial lighting. If we go back to the light source itself, or maybe not the light source, we talk about benefits of windows. So we actually look at windows. A window, if you look at this picture, is in fact just a hole in the building envelope, isn't it? It's just a hole in the envelope, and we have a light source behind it, which is the daylight. Uh, but you could think that the, the window is kind of the luminaire for the daylight. Um, and this uh, window or skylight is then the, the, um, the, well, the hole in the building envelope. This sounds very simple. Um, sometimes you have to start it in a simple, uh, simple way and then look at, at it uh, in a bit more detail. But this hole gives us actually some features. And with these features, we have the benefits. So what we have with these, this hole in the building is that we can get daylight into our room and we can look through it. So what we always say, and, and we'll have it in one of the slides after this, is that the benefits of windows is that we have a view and we have daylight, but there are some other benefits as well, or maybe some things that are not so good, um, like the, um, the, uh, maybe the heat sometimes is not so good that it gets in, but it's also good that it get, can get out when it's getting, getting really hot. So it would be good to open the windows here and to get some fresh air in there and to get a bit of the heat out of there. But it's, it's because of this hole in the building. Why it's not just view? In, and that's why I put here we have the opportunity to look through the building envelope. We can look inside as well from, uh, from the outside. So it has to do something with privacy. And if you look at the reviews, especially the one that uh, Jennifer Veach just made, is that is also this hole makes that we um, that the room looks bigger, so it gives us a spaciousness in, uh, to the room that we wouldn't have if, we, if the hole wouldn't be there. Um, so coming back to that, um, does that then mean that we have to look at all these three things? I think when we look at lighting, we always look at, at the, uh, the hole that lets daylight in and the hole to look through. And then most of the time, we come to the admission of daylight, so to save energy, but also for other reasons, and the uh, view out. And some research says that these are the two most interesting things of daylight, and that must be the reason um, to, um, to like daylight more than electrical lighting. And I'm not so, so sure about that yet, um, but I'll come back to that in a, in a second. So what we will do in this uh, technical report of the CIE, we will look at all the features. So what comes with this hole in the building envelope? And what are the benefits? And what you will see this afternoon, I will just show a few benefits, is that they are, of course, application depending. Once sentence, Jennifer said it, uh, Jennifer Veach said it in Paris again, you, not, you do not always want to have this hole in your um, building envelope. Depends really on the application. People like to have windows in their living rooms, but they don't want to have a big window in their bathroom. 
for example. And now you can imagine that for different applications you have different requirements, and that will definitely reflect in the metrics or the criteria that we set, uh, set to that. But in the end, I hope, I really hope, that we will give you some, or the, the people that use this technical report will give you some support on how to, develop, to, to design or how to think about daylighting to um, have the appropriate um, um, window uh, or hole in the building envelope, depending on the benefits that you want, uh, want to have. And as I said, um, view and daylight um, are obviously the most, probably the most important aspects. But what makes daylight different from electrical lighting? And I like this quote of Peter Boyce in one of his publications. He said, well, physically, it's just exa exactly the same as electrical lighting, and that's electromagnetic radiation in the visual range. Well, there's a bit more in the, in the outside the visual range as well. But, um, it's just radiation, What's make, what, what makes it different? This is a good one for tomorrow, isn't it? Um, so what makes it uh, different? Um, I think one of the biggest things is that it's there in high uh, amounts, so there's a lot of light uh, available, uh, way more than we uh, sensibly do with the artificial lighting. So there's a lot of light and it has this um, short, strong wavelength component, and there's some other aspects as well that might play a role, uh, role in this. Uh, of course, energy efficient is a huge uh, thing, so we'll just definitely discuss this in the technical report. But I would like to, uh, just to give you an impression of what you could expect from us, um, go, um, um, go uh, into a bit more detail when it comes to the highlight levels and um, strong short wavelength compo component. Um, it was already addressed um, several times today that light and well-being or light and health uh, plays a role as an important aspect. I'm not going into details, I just want to point out that daylight can play an important role there. And this is actually research done at the uh, university. Uh, Mirjam is in, in Eindhoven, Mirjam Arias is in the, uh, in the audience, so if you have questions about that, uh, please uh, go, to, uh, go to her. But she did a large field study about seven years ago, or, uh, and, or six, uh, eight years ago, and then uh, found in this that, um, so she measured vertical uh, lumens at the eye of, of, users, of, of office workers, and she found if you have lower levels, then people uh, complain a bit more about uh, sleepiness or fatigue than those that have higher high le uh, light levels at the, at the eye. And it was around 1,000 looks at the eye to, uh, as, as, a, uh, as a guideline. Well, this 1,000 lux comes back in, in other research uh, as well. Uh, there's some other research done at the ETH in Zurich already a few years ago, and it shows that there's something else in daylight as well, so it's very dynamic. Well, not just in light levels, but it changes in color temperature as well. And what we see, and that's where I start the, uh, the link to the references, is that if you look at research done with artificial lighting, these light levels and color temperature really play a role. So it's the, as said, strong blue component and the higher light levels. That's research done with dynamic lighting, and people say that they have a higher concentration and a better well-being with higher light levels and cooler color temperatures. Uh, fluctuating lighting. Um, I just show a few just to give you an impression, uh, just to give you a quick preview, and then you will expect, can expect more from us in the, in the coming year. Um, increased performance and alertness, it was a, were two studies done with a very cool color temperature. They remained the same in light level, 17,000 Kelvin, which is really quite cool. People worked in there for, at least in the Viola study, for at least uh, four weeks, and they um, assessed their self uh, rate, or they assessed their um, 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 concentration, ability to concentrate, as being better in the 17,000 Kelvin situation. So um, if you have cooler color temperatures, people feel more alert. Um, for most of you, that might not be new, but I would I'd like just to point out that this, this kind of research is available um, and uh, available in different, uh, different literature already. And for us, it's just to combine this information and put it in a, in a report. Then another uh, larger study uh, started with a research in, uh, in Germany on sc in schools where they offered cooler light um, at, uh, to pupils. So 
at the moment I had to concentrate, uh, the teachers would switch on the cooler light, higher light levels, and these uh, children would perform better in schools, and I was uh, 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 validated in lab studies uh, as, as well. So there is definitely information out there Although based on studies with artificial lighting, that cool white light or light with a bluer component and high, higher light levels will increase alertness, reduce sleepiness, um, and so on. So this is material that we can use in our daylighting report because daylight offers these higher light levels and these, um, these cooler color temperatures uh, by, them, by themselves. Sorry. Um, just another thing when we talk about daylight, um, although this was uh, not daylight uh, as well, this was 4,000 Kelvin uh, static lighting, 1,000 lux at the eye, and there you see the 1,000 lux again. People with Alzheimer um, were degrading less fast than the people without this lighting, uh, uh, lighting uh, at their, uh, or this lighting levels at their eye. Um, about mood and agreeableness, so in social interaction, higher light levels seem to be positive. There's quite some, oh, there's some research on that. And uh, as a summary, uh, <laughs> sorry, just five minutes left. As, as, as a summary also in the review of uh, Jennifer Feach, um, there is uh, a reduction in, uh, an increase in better mood, um, better well-being, and a reduction in depression. So daylight seems to be beneficial because of these higher light levels and cooler color temperatures. What I would like uh, to uh, do, and that's uh, what, I, what I just discussed, sometimes I have some slides that I can skip, but I don't have the opportunity to do so now, so I'll go through it a bit, bit faster. What you will see is the feature and the benefits in the report. I won't go into detail there here, but another one is, of course, view. There's quite some research on that as well. So the biological effects and non-visual effects are, uh, are uh, there. There's literature on that, but also on view, there's quite some literature. Um, I'll just skip this one and go through some research that's already older, um, but it's definitely clear that if you have a view in comparison to a window with windowless um, room, and these are the ones that compared views, or uh, rooms with a window and rooms without a, a window, then there's less confusion, people are uh, more focused on their, um, on their work uh, and they have less problems, for example, in, uh, in st with stress in, in hospitals. Um, but all that is just based on a few studies between window and windowed less and win uh, rooms with, uh, with windows. There's quite some research if you compare windows with a nature view and windows with a view of a building scene. There's quite some information on that. And in the end, it says that it would be better to have a view with nature, um, because that has all these kind of benefits. So if you have a view, then it would be better to have uh, nature in there. Although there's some research now showing that it maybe is not nature, but it has to be attractive, like, um, again, uh, Miriam Arias did, uh, uh, presented in a paper together with Jennifer Veach, or uh, it, it, should, it should be interesting because it seems to reduce the discomfort glare from, uh, from the window. So the content of the view is very important as well. And of course, you need to have the reference to that, so you will find that in the, uh, in the summary of this, uh, this paper in the, um, online as well. So view has also quite some benefits, but what we see, if we look at the research, and there's still research ongoing, that it's not very clear what exactly determines this um, positive effect of, uh, of uh, view. Uh, and I would like to show you two things. Uh, this is research done at the University in Eindhoven when I was still working there, and this is actually the work of uh, my last uh, student there, and he covered uh, the, uh, the window opening, so he had subjects assessing uh, or they're actually doing performance tests in this situation. Then he covered the daylight openings with a translucent material. So they had daylight with translucent material. After that, he changed the, or he put artificial lighting behind the same translucent material and mimicked the daylighting because he completely reg registered what was happening outside and he mimicked it with artificial lighting and then he also looked at static lighting behind this diffusing panel and he actually didn't find any differences in performance. He didn't look at acceptance but he didn't find anything on performance whereas we think still that daylight might have an impact on that as well. Well, there's some other research that uh, 
that uh, show exactly similar directions. There are some others that show something different. So I think there's still quite some research to be done. And actually, Professor Peter Kahn from the University of Washington is looking at uh, large screens that really reflect what's going outside. So he has a camera on the roof of the, uh, of the building and projects here what's happening outside. And he says it's better to have a real view instead of this one. Although there's also research that said it's the same whether you have a real view or pictures of nature in your building. So there seems to be some contradiction uh, in there. What's of course important and what we will include in the CIE report as well is in how much can you influence then this view um, with, with stuff, uh, for example with uh, sun shading or prints on that, and there's a lot of work done at the University, uh, or used to be done at the University of Eindhoven, but I think they're still working on that. Also Marie-Claude Dubois had looked at this because she looked at colored uh, uh, call it glazing. Um, also, John uh, Marijewicz will talk about that electronic, electrochromic material will, of course, influence your view. So we will look into that uh, at the CIE report as well. And that would be the point where I would jump normally, because I think there are so many aspects that we still need to look into. So we looked at uh, we look at uh, view but we look mostly at static views, so we compare it to pictures, what happens when you make it dynamic, like Professor Kahn does. We look at the highlighting levels of daylight, but there's lots of other things, so it's the spectrum that plays a role, but maybe it's the directional direction of the light as well. Um, maybe um, the uh, privacy plays a role as well in this whole ass assessment. So these are definitely things that we uh, at CIE will look into. Now I have to go to my last slide, so I'll show you just what we have at the University in Berlin, but I'll show you at a later stage. We can change the luminances of the walls without uh, influencing anything. So we can change actually the whole luminance distribution in, the, in, the, in, this, uh, in this test room. So we can look at direction of the light in a controlled way, and that's what we will do at the University in Berlin. But that's not the, uh, the thing that you need to know. You need to know what's going to happen in CIE. <laughs> and if you want to know something about the luminous distribution and direction of the light, talk to me later in the, in the break. But that's what, we, what you can expect from us. So a report on the features and benefits of daylighting, including all the aspects that might influence these features, and uh, of course, is it, as I said, it is voluntary work. So if there are any, any volunteers in the room, I will be happy, happy to include you in this technical committee. Thank you so much.